you. Um, uh, um, there is some, I think there is some internet uh, issues. So I, I will be, I will not be, I will mute my video. Okay, I will continue with, I will continue talking. Uh, respected uh, senior faculty members, my colleagues, friends. Uh, so the uh, greetings from Kerala, greetings from Trivandrum, Trivandrum uh, greetings from Regional Cancer Center. This is the institution where I work. This is the back view. There is a construction ongoing. The back, that's a 14 story building is coming up. This is the OP block. This is specialty OP block. So yeah, we have running clinics, the head and neck clinic, the chest breast clinic. So all the OPs are specialty clinics. I'm working in head and neck clinic for the last 15 years. This OP block and administrative block. This is the, uh, I, this is the general ward, the theaters, the, uh, the, and the others, uh, this come. And daycare chemotherapy is also in the OP block. And we have a pay ward. And you can see a friend, there is the reception. Uh, you can see a small building there. It's a reception, and the hematon quality award is there. Um, so greetings from so my OP is in this block, and my IP this IP, and the radiotherapy bunkers are in this. The chemotherapy is in, is given in this block. Okay, thank you uh, very much for the invitation. I thank the Oncology Academic Forum for the invitation. Um, uh, is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So this will be the flow of uh, this one. is different from other head and neck sites. Two, what are the indications for imaging in carcinoma larynx? Then how to read a normal CT scan of larynx? The checklist for a CT scan reporting, the staging based on the imaging findings and the incorporation of CT scan findings in the decision making of treatment. So we know that the imaging in carcinoma larynx have four purposes, actually. One, it is for the diagnostic purpose, one staging. Second, to take a decision based on the treatment, okay? And the third is the indication for radiotherapy for the contouring purpose. And fourth is the evaluation after treatment, either radiation, chemo radiation, and follow-up. So these are the four uh, indications Carcinoma larynx. So, is different from other head and neck sites, and how imaging has a important role compared to oral cavity or oropharynx. We know that the oral cavity, oropharynx, and in hypopharynx, the staging is mainly based on size criteria. Size criteria. It is less than two centimeters, two to four centimeters, more than four centimeters. But that is not the case with larynx. So Bayer, can you uh, mute? Thank you. Uh, so this is based on size criteria, but in larynx, we know that staging is not based on size criteria. It is based on the subsite involvement. If you have a tonsillar lesion extending into soft palate, it is, if the size is less than four centimeter, it is T2. But if you have a tumor in glottis coming to supraglottis, it is T2, irrespective of the size or a glottic tumor extending into subglottis, it is T2, irrespective of the size of the tumor. So it is the subsite involvement, which matters in larynx compared to oropharynx, oral cavity, or hypopharynx. That is one. Then this is the only tumor in head and neck region where you have a subclassification for T1. We do not have T1A or T1B, we have T1A, T1B, and T1C in breast cancer. But we do not have a T1A or T1B for oral cancer, or for that matter, in you know, oral cancer. But as we have T1A and in glottic tumor, we have T1A and T1B. Then second point is not based on size criteria that we have discussed. Tumors, least stage presentation, T1 ocal code, we have different treatment options, radiotherapy or laser treatment. So we need to have a proper evaluation of staging. Then imaging is very important in staging and that we have already discussed. The prognosis among subsites are different. If you look, if you have, uh, if you have uh, among subsites are different. If you have a tonsillar tumor and soft palate, very adjacent structures, size, if it is T1 or T1 tonsillar, T1 soft palate, there may not be much difference in the prognosis. But T1 and 0 supraglottic larynx, T1 and 0 glottic, the prognosis is entirely different 
the chance of subclinical lymph node involvement in a T1 or a T2 supraglottic tumor see, varies from 27 to 42%. Whereas in T1, glottic tumor, it is less than pars, because it is practically zero or zero to 5%, less than 5%. For a T2 glottic, maybe maximum 10%. So that is different. So prognosis is different. And if you look in the guide, there is treatment guidelines for subsides. Tonsil and soft palate, there is no separate guideline for soft palate and tonsil in oropharynx. But if you look into the NCC in guidelines, you can see that there is separate guideline for supraglottis and separate guideline for glottic tumors. So this is how carcinoma larynx is different from other head and neck sites. Next is, uh, next is the, uh, the next is the, so we, we knew that majority of the patient, so two-third of the patient is from glottics. So two-third of the patients, around 60 to 67 percent, is constituted by the glottic tumors. One-third is supraglottic tumors. And uh, if you look into the subglottic tumors, the primary subglottic tumors are very rare. Most of them, it is due to the glottic tumors coming to the subglottis, and it is constituted less than 5 percent. And proper clinical examination, history and clinical examination is very important. Performance status. We have to, most of these patients, glottic tumor present with hoarseness. So we have to look for the duration. Then is there any emergency? The moment patient comes to the clinic, whether the patient is having any airway compromise, any strider, that's the first and foremost thing. The moment the patient walks into the clinic, you have to understand whether we need to intervene, whether any emergency situation is required, emergency intervention is required. Then history, we should understand that hoarseness is alone, not due to carcinoma larynx. It may be due to C alarm. It may be due to C effects. Anything can produce a mediastinal nodes. C a thyroid. This is all present with hoarseness. So proper clinical history is very important. And general examination is very important. If you have a clubbing, supraclavicular fossa node, then you have to think more of a more of a C a lung rather than C a larynx. And patient is having a thyroid swelling, then you have to think more of C a thyroid. So history is very important. And whether the patient is having foreign body sensations, patient is having any dysphagia, that is very important. If a patient is having extension into pyriform fossa, the patient may have a nutritional compromise. We may not be able to execute the plant treatment. Performance sets is very important because elderly patients and performance sets of patients, they may not tolerate the plant treatment. So these patients may not need a very extensive imaging, may not be required. Patients who have performance sets of three or four, the intention of treatment is palliation, elderly patients. So these patients may not need a CT scan. The moment the patient comes, the, the, we all know that any patient with a hoarseness, which lasts more than two weeks, we need, then you need to have an mirror eye examination. So you, this is the epiglottis. You can see that's the epiglottis. This is the array epiglottic fold. This is the arytenoid. This is the false cord. This is the true vocal cord. This is a pyriform fossa. So this is the mirror examination. And after that, you see a lesion in mirror examination. You take the patient to the endoscopy room and you do a flexible endoscopy and take a biopsy. During endoscopy, you should have a proper interact with your head and neck surgical oncologist or a head and neck surgeon because you need proper documentation of the endoscopic findings. This is very important for one, staging, number one, to decide treatment. If you are going for radiotherapy, radiotherapy portals, and if you, whether the patient is a candidate for a conservation surgery, these are all, and what about the function? These are all very important. So you should know where is the primary site, what is the nature of the growth, what is the extension in the subsites. The extension in the subsites, it becomes T2. A transglottic tumor is a T2. The mobility of the ocular cord, whether it is fully mobile, T1, that is, mobility is impaired, T2, that is, ipsilateral local cord is fixed, that is, T3. Whether anterior commission is involved, why it is important? Because anterior commission involvement will not change the staging, but it is important to know one for radiotherapy planning. Number two, we need to know that this anterior aspect of this at, the, at that area, pericondrium is absent, so the patient can have a transglottic spread. It may become an initial, it can be, it may be a small tumor, but we may be dealing with a T4 disease. Then, and also for deciding the, the energy of the beam we are using. So under the extension into the post cricoid is T3 from a supraglottic tumor, and extension into pyrifosa from a supraglottic larynx is T2. So that is extension into hypopharynx, so whether it's extending into the, uh, the valicula, whether it's going into the base of tongue, 
the sir, air sorry, evaluation and uh, sir, okay now your um audio is a bit uh, uh, breaking in middle oh thanks patient is advanced larynx and patient is aspirating there is no point in giving chemo radiation for that patient that patient may benefit from a upfront surgery rather than taking that patient for a chemo radiation program and after biopsy then the second important thing is to do an imaging of the neck do you need ct scan or whether it is mri if the mri is more sensitive ct scan is more specific if you want to evaluate the cartilage then the sensitivity of mri is very high more than 90% but specificity is low ct scan specificity is better so then ct is the invest is considered the investigation of choice when you discuss the nasopharynx when we discuss oropharynx we discuss more of of an mri but when we discuss larynx and hypopharynx we generally talk about ct scan and we consider that ct is the imaging of choice then is uh, the x chest then there are certain situations we need to do a ct thorax suppose if a patient is having extension subglottic extension coming down to you suspect a trochlear infiltration by that t4a patient who have extension into the postcricoid and cervical esophagus a patient who have lower cervical nodes these all patients need a ct scan or ct scan of the thorax otherwise x ray chest is fine no need for a pet ct in the initial staging of uh, the larynx there is no need for a ct abdomen or a bone scan we need to have a baseline blood test and we uh, if your the patient is planned for chemo radiation definitely we should have a clean patient should have a dental evaluation priority so this is a worker for carcinoma larynx then coming to the imaging in a normal uh, carcinoma larynx i already told you that ct scan is the investigation of choice now before that uh, before that or whether all patients need a biopsy whether fnac is enough that was i i did discuss that but that was a discussion that came in the icmr meeting for the formulation of guidelines bibin sir is here so then the this consensus was that the biopsy is desirable fnac if you if you feel that the if you do a biopsy and patient it will lead on to tracheostomy then we may have we may can get away with fnac otherwise biopsy is in larynx all patients maybe an except t1 name it called very plan this for sir there is an auto again having a t1 name it called lesion and patient is not having a supraglottic or a subglottic extension fully mobile cord t1 a that may be the situation where you may award an imaging because this in this situation the radiotherapy and laser treatment both have equal results and both have both same is the treatment so this may be the only situation yeah that too, that too you can decide whether this patient also subject for a ct scan but that may be the only situation Hello. that may be the, yes that may be the only situation where you you cannot avoid so all other patients should have a ct scan yes uh, uh, can you hear me now yes sir okay okay thank you uh, there is some problem with my internet connection this is that's a problem bear with me i'm sorry uh, okay so coming to the uh, the next slide uh, so normal ct scan of the normal ct scan of larynx before that we need to know the laryngeal framework properly the larynx extends from the tip of the epiglottis to the cricoid cartilage so that ranges between c3 to c6 whatever so this is the epiglottis this is a free edge you can you see that can you see that yes whether my mouse is uh, moving yes sir yes okay that is very important in the, in the in the because we are all discussing the ct scans so from this epiglottis this is the from the epiglottis to the the caudal edge of the cricoid cartilage so this is the laryngeal framework you have the you have the hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone so you have the hyoid bone and this is the thyroid cartilage this is the cricoid cartilage and this you have the arytenoid cartilage 
is, and this is the corniculate cartilage. Can you see that? The corniculate cartilage and the cuneiform, we cannot see in CT scans. Okay, we can see only the hyoid bone, the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid, the arachnoid. Okay, so these are the, the bone and the cartilage which we see. This, the hyoid is connected to the thyroid cartilage by two ligaments. One is the median thyrohyoid ligament, and there is a lateral thyrohyoid ligament, which connects the greater corner of the hyoid to the, the superior corner of the thyroid cartilage. And this is the inferior corner of the thyroid cartilage. You have the, the laminae, and this is the laryngeal prominence. There is a thyroid notch, and this is the cri The thyroid is connected to the cricoid by the median cricothyroid ligament. So this is the this one, and the, you have the epiglottis. You have a fix the mobile part of the epiglottis and a fixed portion. The fixed portion is is having more. This is a base. It's more thin, and it is fixed to the, the, this is the thyroid, by the thyroepiglottic ligament. This is a thyroepiglottic ligament. And the, the, this, is the, uh, this is the arachnoid cartilage. The arachnoid cartilage, it rests on the cricoid cartilage. And this have an apex and this is a base. Okay, and this is the cricoarachnoid joint. This is very important. This is a functional unit of the larynx. So that is the cricoarachnoid joint. This is the level of the glottis, the cricoarachnoid joint. When you analyze whether it is glottic, first and foremost thing when you read a CT scan is that we need to understand whether it is supraglottic, glottic, or subglottic. When you see an epiglottis, thyroid cartilage, and you see the, uh, then you know that the cricoarachnoid joint. If you see, I will show that in a CT scan. You know that you are dealing with a Okay, got the level of the glottis. And below that, if you see only the cricoid cartilage, then you have to understand that you are dealing with the subglottic portion. And when you see tri trachea, means it is, it, is, it is below the larynx. So this is how you should understand. Now, for, this is the, there is a membrane. This is the thyrohyoid membrane. And this is a cricothyroid membrane is there. And these are two membranes through which the larynx, the tumors can spread laterally, extra laryngeal spread, piercing the thyrohyoid membrane this is a thyrohyoid membrane, and there is a cricothyroid membrane. In the, this is a cricoid, and this is the thyroid, this cricothyroid membrane, and through which the tumors can spread. So that is how extra laryngeal spread can occur without involvement of the cartilage. Okay, same picture. And uh, we will discuss, the, we have a pre-epiglottic space, by the this is the hyoepiglottic ligament. This is the hyoid, the hyoid, and this is epiglottis, hyoepiglottic ligament. Then you have, then you have the inferiorly it is the thyroepiglottic ligament, posteriorly it is the epiglottis, anteriorly it is a thyrohyoid membrane. And this is the free space that is called the pre-epiglottic space. This is the pre-epiglottic space. And you have two important uh, other ligaments. One is called the vestibular ligament. That is called the false cord. That we can see, I will show in CT scan. This is a false cord. Then you have the true ocal cord. This is the false cord. This is the ocal ligament. That is the true ocal cord. And the false ligament extends from the apex of the, the arachnoid cartilage to thyroid cartilage. And the true ocal cord, that's the ocal ligament, extends from the base of the arachnoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. And why it is important, this is a membrane called the quadrangular membrane, and there is another membrane, the cornus elasticus. This prevents larynx. Now I'm coming to the core of the, uh, the, yeah, yes, this is a, this, uh, I will show, uh, the, this is, there are two uh, other membranes. That's the one is the quadrangular membrane. Other is the cornus elasticus. I will show you at the end, the, there are pictures for that. Okay. So coming to the, uh, the true, how to read a normal CT scan of the larynx. That is very important. First of all, you should understand that the level of the, whether it is a supraglottic, glottic, or a subglottic level. So we have T, we have seen thyroid cartilage, we have seen cricoid cartilage, we have seen arachnoid, and how we are going to see these cartilages in the CT scan. That is the first and foremost thing. So this is the hyoid bone. This is the cadaveric section shows this is the hyoid bone. This is the valicula. This is, a, this is the median. 
epiglottis. And between the hyoid and the epiglottis, there is a membrane that's median gloso epiglottic fold membrane and fold. And on lateral to this, lateral to this, lateral to this, lateral to this is the valicula, val valicula, and this is the epiglottis. This epiglottis. And posterior to epiglottis, you have the this is the free edge of the epiglottis, free edge of the epiglottis. So what, how you will see in CT scan, this is the hyoid bone, this is the median gloss epiglottic fold, and on lateral to that, that is the that is the valicula. This is the free epiglottis, and this is the pharyngeo epiglottic fold, and this is the pharyngeo epiglottic fold, and this you will see in the pharyngeo epiglottic fold. And this is the pre-epiglottic space, pre-epiglottic space in CT scan, and it is continuing lateral as the paraglottic fat that will show, I will show in later. This is the valicula, the, this is the median The supraglottis is, has mainly five parts. One, epiglottis, the arytenoid, the aryepiglottic fold, false cord, and ventricle. So this is one by one. This is the epiglottic fold. This is the aryepiglottic fold. And posterior to aryepiglottic fold, this is the pyriform sinus. And you have the posterior pharyngeal wall. Okay, this is the posterior pharyngeal wall. This is the hyoid bone. And lower down, this is the, we can see that this is the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage. And the uh, hyoepiglottic ligament, we cannot see in CT scan. Uh, you have the aryepiglottic fold here. Posterior to that, there is a pyriform and this is what we are seeing. This is the pre-epiglottic space, pre-epiglottic space. And continuing laterally as the paraglottic fat. Once uh, you see uh, some black there in a space, that's just, it is due to the fat. It is the hypodense area. That is the pre-epiglottic space. And once the patient is having a pre-epiglottic space involvement from a laryngeal tumor, it becomes T3. And you have a paraglottic fat. That is the once the patient is that infiltration that is also it is called as it is the the paraglottic fat this is the aryepiglottic fold posterior to aryepiglottic fold this is the pyriform sinus this is how a normal pyriform sinus will look like and posterior to that that is the what is this is the posterior pharyngeal wall what is this anyone can say uh, what is this can anyone all in here submandibular gland yeah, very good. Submandibular gland. This is the lower limit of the submandibular gland is at the level of the either the caudal edge of the higher bone or sometimes the caudal limit of the submandibular gland. So that is submandibular gland. Then you have the, the others. This is the uh, pre epiglottic space continuing laterally as paraglottic. And you have the arytenoid. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage. This is the pyriform sinus. You have the pyriform fossa. This is the normal pyriform sinus. You have, I told you that arytenoid has a base and an apex. And this is the arytenoid cartilage. So this is arytenoid cartilage. You can see that this is the arytenoid cartilage. You can see an enhancing lesion on the left side, left, left side. You can see that, and it is crossing the middle. I'm not going into the tumors now. This is a normal CT scan. This is how a normal CT scan of larynx will look like. Now coming to the, at the level of the glottis. If you have a tumor and if you have a CT scan, if you have a CT scan at the level of the glottis, how do you recognize that? This is the arytenoid. This is the arytenoid cartilage. This is the arytenoid cartilage and the arytenoid cartilage, I, there is an X and the base. Base rests on the cricoid cartilage. So when you see that level, you see a cricoid arytenoid joint, then that becomes, that is the level of the glottis. At that level, what all things you will see? That is the level of the glottis. You see, this is the, you have the ocal process. You have the ocal process of the arytenoid cartilage. And then you have the ocal ligament. Ocal ligaments extends from the ocal process of the arytenoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. Then you have a muscle that is called the thyroarytenoid muscle. If you have medial and lateral belly, and the medial belly of the thyroarytenoid muscle is called the ocalis muscle. And the ocalis muscle has originates from the thyroid cartilage and it is inserted into the ocal process of the arytenoid cartilage. And what other structures you see at the level of the glottis, you have the pyriform sinus apex. The apex of the pyriform sinus 
is also seen at the level of the glottis. So you have the cricoarytenoid joint at the level. You have the, uh, you have the muscles, but you may not be able to make out that in a CT scan. Okay, so this, this is how you recognize. So I will show you this picture which shows, uh, which is, so this is a, this is a, at the level of the true occult code, you have the anterior commissure, the anterior commissure here. And the posterior commissure, this is the posterior commissure, the space extends between the two arachnoids. See, this is the posterior commissure. You have the triangular space between the two occult cords that is called the ribbon glottis. The true occult cord, it has the, it has the anterior two third and a posterior one third portion. The anterior two third is mainly the occult ligament and muscle that I have shown you. This is the occult ligament and muscle. And this is standard two third. Posterior one third is mainly the fibrous, that is fibrous, the vocal process of the vocal process of the arachnoid. That is the posterior one third. This is the vocal process of the arachnoid cartilage that forms the posterior one third. It is fibrous. Anterior two third is membranous. Most of the tumors occurs in the anterior aspect rather than the posterior aspect. When you have a tumor in, at the level of the glottis, we should know where exactly the tumor is, where it is in the, at the mid-cord, anterior two-third, anterior one-third, where the patient is having extension to anterior commissure, who's what about the mobility of the ocular, any extension in the superior anterior extension is present. And these are the structures, these are the information we need. So I'm showing you, so this is the cricoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage. And I, I forgot to mention one other point that is called the thyroarachnoid gap. This is the thyroarachnoid gap. This is the thyroid cartilage. This is the arachnoid cartilage. This is called the thyroarachnoid gap. When you have see any thyroarachnoid gap widening compared to the opposite side, then you have to think that this patient is likely to have a tumor which is infiltrating posteriorly. I will show you that. So this is a, so you, you first of all you should understand which is the level. So this is the cricoarytenoid joint, and you know that this is at the level of the glottis. You can see this. You can see an enhancing lesion. Actually, it is not really enhancing because it is plain. You can see that this is a lesion on the right focal cord is filling the entire uh, side with under the commission involvement, and lesion is crossing the opposite side. Lesion is crossing the opposite side. And you can see compared to this side, there is a widening of the thyroarachnoid gap. You can see a widening of the thyroarachnoid gap. Uh, uh, whether, whether I am clear to you, are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you're clear. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yes, this is the thyroarachnoid gap. It is widened. Can you see a lesion here? You can see an enhanced, you can see that lesion here. So it is coming posteriorly. So that is how, so it is a T3 disease because you can see the paraglottic fat on the opposite side. On this side, you cannot make the paraglottic fat. It is obliterated. The pre-epiglottic space, uh, sorry. So this is the thyroarytenoid gap is widened. So this is a T3 disease. And how a normal in the so the, this is the surgery. You can see that this is the piece of tongue. This is a vallecula. This is a epiglottis. And you have three, uh, you have the, this is a hyoid bone, this is thyroid cartilage, this is a cricoid cartilage. So this piece is called the pre-epiglottic space. And the epiglottic, if you have a tumor here, it can spread posteriorly and can come to the level of the cricoid cartilage. So this, then it becomes T3 disease. If you have a tumor and it's spreading to the pre-epiglottic space, it becomes T3 disease. And so, and in the front view, you, you have to, this is the, uh, you have the, False cord, this is the false cord, the ventricle. You have the, the at the level of the true vocal, this is the true vocal cord. Then you have the cartilage, this is the thyroid cartilage, this is the cricoid cartilage. Why you need to know the coronal view? Because we can understand the paraglottic fat infiltration. Any tumor which spreads to the level of the, the, the cricoid, then you have to consider it as a subglottic extension. So this is a cricoid joint. So it is at the level of the, uh, the at the level of the true vocal cord. Now, uh, those who have joined late, this is for uh, the, this is, uh, I am summarizing the whole thing. This is the thyroid This is the pre-epiglottic paraglottic fat, areopiglottic fold, reform sinus, posterior pharyngeal wall. And this is the arachnoid. We have started seeing the cartilage becomes more here, here, cartilage. This is the coarytenoid joint. 
So, and there are certain tumors where if you have even a T4 tumor, but the patient is having a cartilage destruction, thyroid cartilage destruction is present. But if you can preserve it, the cricoarachnoid joint is intact, muscle and the nerve supply is intact, then you can do a near total laryngectomy. You can do that. You can preserve the function even in advanced disease. And now, you can see tricord. When it is more rounded, it becomes a tricord cartilage. And this is, the, this is how it will look like at different levels. So that is the, uh, now we are coming to the tumors proper. What you look in a CT scan, always you read, symmetry is the key. Whenever you see any asymmetry, head and neck radio. Excuse me, sir. Uh, sir, can you repeat yes. the last word, please? Uh, again, it was a uh, audio text, sir. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, soft tissue, uh, uh, this one, slide or this one? Slide or this slide or this one? What you are looking? This slide, no? no? Previous slide, what sir. You previous. Previous oh, slide. CT scan. CT scan, okay. sir. Okay, okay. Yes. This is how, this is the road cartilage. This is the pre epiglottic space. This is the parotid fat. This is area epiglottic fold. This is the posterior pharyngeal wall. And this is the arachnoid cartilage. You can see the arachnoid cartilage here, cricoarachnoid joint here, and the cricoid cartilage. And when you are see, when you are not seeing cricoid cartilage, then it becomes it is at the level of the trachea. It becomes trachea. And whenever you see any soft tissue, the thumb rule is that you should not see any soft tissue in cricoid cartilage. If you see any soft tissue in the cricoid cartilage, at the level of the cricoid cartilage, suppose if you see something here, it, it is a subclavic symptom. It's an easy way to learn it. Now, what you look for, so what you are looking for uh, in a CT scan, always you look for the symmetry. If both sides are equal, perfect, it may be normal. But whenever you see something abnormal on one side compared to the other side, always you compare with the other side. And if you see any soft asymmetric soft prominent normal contrast enhancement if you see any contrast enhancement third is if you see an obvious definite bulky mass and all and the fourth thing is that any obliteration of the normal fat planes or spaces the spaces which you have mentioned the pre-epiglottic space or the paraglottic space if any of this the obliteration of any of this space are seen then you have to think okay this is an upstage so you have an, a proper endoscopic function findings because we always we have to correlate with the endoscopic findings. That is one of the important things. If you have it, that is the backbone. A proper endoscopic evaluation is the backbone of the decision making. So that you correlate with the CT scan. Then you decide a treatment whether the patient is, uh, if you, that's then. So I trust more my uh, surgery, colleague, surgery colleague rather than CT scan. So then always I should have a proper endoscopic findings. Then you correlate with a CT scan. Then you take a decision whether to go for uh, what treatment this patient should under, undergo. And then, uh, then second for CT scan report scan. So when you see any finding in endoscope, always you should have a T1 open code, full open code. Then you have to think where the endings are. Then if anything. If you're not correlating, then always you go back and discuss with your surgeon that, okay, the CT shows this. Have you seen that in endoscopy? Then, and if you have a T2, always you should think that it may be T3. Then you have to look, look for subtle changes like paraglottic fat infiltration is present, impaired mobility. If you see an impaired mobility, then our rule, our aim is to rule out as T3 disease because in a T2 disease, you may require only single modality treatment. In a T3 disease, if a paraglottic fat is infiltrated, then it is becomes T3. You need to give chemo radiation. We need to treat the whole neck. Always you have to include chemotherapy also. It becomes, the yield is more, and then you have to add systemic treatment also. So that's why in each step, you can, T3, if you have a T3 disease, hemilarynx is fixed, then you have to rule out whether the patient is having a cartilage destruction to rule out. When you have a clinically T3, you have to rule out a T4 disease before proceeding for chemo radiation for any T3 disease. Now, checklist for a, a CT scan reporting. This is a huge list I will come back after. I will explain the whole thing. Then I will come back. Then it will be easy for you. 
Then the other important thing is staging based on imaging. So after the endoscopy and CT scan, you stage a disease. And based on the stage in the performance status and whether the, then you decide a treatment for that particular patient. So I will take a, this is a, at the level of the glottis because it's a cricoarectoid joint. Okay. So I'm repeating because that's how. And when you go back to your clinics, you should be equipped to read the CT scan by yourself. You trust yourself rather than your radiologist. Okay. You cricoarectoid joint. And then, so if you have a tumor in the say, which all it can extend the it can extend to the anterior commission. Posteriorly, it can extend the posterior commission. Then it can. Uh, we have seen one tumor where the cricoarytenoid gap can be widened. It can posteriorly. Laterally, it can extend to the paraglottic fat and it infiltrates the inner cortex, outer cortex, and extra labyrinth fat. And it can spread down. This is the this I told you. This is a false cord. This is a true cord. It can pierce and it can spread. It can have subglottic extension. It can pierce the cricothyroid membrane. It can have an extra lateral spread. And that's how then superiorly it can extend into the supraglottic larynx. It can extend into the preepiglottic space. We will take a few examples. If you have, when you have a T1 opal cord, if you say if the endoscopy shows a lesion, proliferate lesion in the mid cord or in the anterior one third or anterior two third, then you should have a CT scan. You have to look. What are the things you should look? Where is the tumor? Whether it is fully mobile, whether it is extending the entire opal cord, the mid cord, posterior one third. So you can see that here in this case, it is extending into the entire opal cord. And you can also see entire opal cord. And there a commission is involved. Lation is crossing the midline. The T1 B disease. So then how you, then if you have a such a lesion, what makes you think that whether this patient should undergo radiation or surgery? Once the patient is having under the commission involvement, whether the patient is having a posterior commission involvement, patient is having a subglottic extension, patient is having a supra or patient is having an impaired mobility, generally this patient will go for radiotherapy. If you have a mid-cord lesion, fully mobile cord, then radiotherapy and the laser treatment, both are equally effective in terms of local control. Now, if you have early checklist for a early glottic tumors, now T1B, you need to know whether anterior commission or posterior commission involvement is there. Then any subglottic extension present, extension in the supraglottic larynx, what about the mobility of the cord? So this is one series can I told you that whenever you see any lesion in the cricoid, this is a subglottic extension. This is a subglottic extension. All, all these tumors should have a radiotherapy as a treatment model. Sometimes we need to understand that I told you beginning, sometimes it will be like T1, maybe a T4. So here you can see a lesion in the anterior aspect, but on a close observation, the patient had a cartilage destruction. Sorry, the extra laryngeal spread was there. So this was a T4 disease actually. It was a T4 disease. So it may not always, there's a meticulous evaluation is required uh, in uh, assessing the disease and stage and treat accordingly. This is a tumor which extends in the free portion of the epiglottis. This is an enhancing lesion there, pedangulated growth. And it is extending this T1 disease. There is no extension into the pyriform process impact. So extension into the, uh, if it is not involving the glottis or subglottis, it is only T1. Extension into pyriform foresight is T2. And uh, if extension into valicol, it is also T2, but it is, uh, it is a T1 disease. And even if the epiglottis, the tumor extends into array epiglottic pore, it is only T1. But paraglottic fat or a pre-epiglottic, then it becomes T1. It's a T1, epiglottis, and this is the, the you can see that, epig this is the epiglottis and array epiglottic pore. So it is a T1 disease. And uh, most of these patients will have disease, high chance for nodal involvement. So meticulous evaluation of the lymph node stations is required, especially T2, level 2 and level 3 region for such tumors, bulky tumors. This is again a lesion in the T2. This is a T1, this is a T2 one, but this is a T2. This is a valiculus involved. This is a valicular. Actually, it is extending into the base of time. So valicular, it's a T1. Pre-epiglottic stage is intact. It's a T2 disease. Generally, these patients will go for 
radiotherapy. Therapy is also an option, but in supraglottic tumors, and uh, main concern is that the patient, those patients who are undergoing conservation, laryngeal surgery, like supraglottic partial laryngectomy, this patient should have a bilateral elective neck dissection as well, because in T1 and T2 supraglottic tumors, the chance of lymph node involvement is high to the tune of around 27 to 40%. Means it is high. One third of the patients need an adjuvant radiation. So once you feel that this patient requires an adjuvant program after a conservation laryngeal surgery, then the quality of voice will be much inferior to, compared to a patient who is undergoing definitive radiotherapy. So that is the concern. And Up to lingual surface epiglottis, it is T2. But if we have a tumor in the epiglottis, which is going into valicular, then it becomes T2. This is a T2 disc. The T2 disc. Pre epiglottic space is intact. Generally, this patient will go for radiotherapy. There are certain situations where you will not be able to make out whether it's a primary tumor is in the piriform sinus or in the supraglottic larynx, especially in the marginal zone. You can see that. You cannot say whether it is, this is a piriform sinus, this is a normal piriform sinus. On the left side, this is a bulky disease and extending into the array epiglottic fold. You cannot say whether it is the array epiglottic fold tumor extending into piriform fossa or a piriform fossa tumor extending into array epiglottic fold. Either way, it is T2. So the coronal view. So this is the coronal view. Uh, why it is important? Because for two important things, this is the paraglottic fat. So paraglottic fat obliteration can be very nicely delineated in the uh, coronal view. And also to external. Uh, I will give you five important things you should look in a coronal view of a CT scan of a larynx. One is, this is the epiglottis. This is the epiglot. Second is the false cord. This is the false cord and this is the false cord. The, this is the ventricle, this is the ventricle. And this is the two vocal cord. You know that at the level of the triquiret knot joint, I've been mentioning many times. This is the paraglottic band. And you should know the Suppose you see any tumor being in the level of the tricot band, means I told you that it's a subglottic expression. So in such, that is how you, you should assess the paraglottic band. And you can also make out the extra laryngeal spread here. If you have it, this is the thyroid cartilage, and in the coronal view, if you see a tumor here, you can see that it's an extra laryngeal. So these are the look. Now we have discussed T1. T2, this is. So for treatment purpose, I teach my residents that the for larynx, it can be divided into six groups. This is not given in a textbook. That's how I teach my residents. The T1 and T2 vocal cord, T1 and T2 larynx, either RT or surgery. Proper selection should be there for surgery. Ensure that this patients will not come back for adjuvant program. Then that patient can be taken for surgery. That's in an oral involvement is T1 and T2 with the nodal that is N1 or N2. That is the second group. These are treated by definitely chemo radiation program. Third group is the T3 disease. And T3 disease with no function issues, like no aspiration. This group that is cartilage restriction of the structure. And that should undergo a restriction. Sir, sorry to interrupt, but your voice is breaking. Okay. Now, can you hear me? Yes, sir. It is better now. Can you please repeat oh. the previous part? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah of course. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I will I will try to repeat. Okay, uh, T1 and T2 disease, uh, this patient's T1 and T2 N0. This is the first group. This patient can be treated by radiotherapy or surgery. And proper selection should be done. Proper selection should be there for because the patients who are undergoing conservation laryngitis should not be candidate for radiotherapy. Then the quality of life, the OIS, 
quality, everything will come down. Second group is T1 and T2 with the nodal involvement. Generally, definitely team radiation protocol. Even if this patient are under surgery and this patient require adjuvant program because of the nodal involvement. Third group is T3, T3 with N0 to N2. T3, N0 to N2 that we will discuss. The fourth group is T4A uh, with or without cartilage destruction. And I will discuss that. Then the fifth group is T4B or N3 disease. And the sixth group is patients with metastatic disease. So we'll take the third. T3. Now I'm clear whether I am audible to you. So it's breaking in between. Breaking in between. Okay. Uh, it is heavy rain here. I'm sorry. It's a heavy rain. So there is some interrupt internet issues. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. So T3 larynx is, uh, it is T3 because of five features. Two are endoscopic, three are radiological. So why you need a CT scan? Because the hemilarynx fixity and the post cricoid involvement, that is mainly the endoscopy findings. The paraglottic fat, the pre-epiglottic space involvement, the inner cortex, they are mainly radiological findings. So if you have a hemilarynx fixity and post cricoid, this more, these are, you can make out from an endoscopy. The third, the the paraglottic space involvement, the pre-epiglottic space, inner cortex, it is mainly a CT scan finding. Okay, now I will take the one by one. Here you have a vocal cord tumor extending into the supraglottis and also the subglottis. So this is the paraglottic fat. It's involving both sides. Now you can see that there is a subglottic extension is also there because it's at the level of the tricot cartilage. So it is a T3 disease. And so this patient, the standard treatment, if there is no aspiration, standard treatment is to go for concurrent chemo radiation. Now he, here I have a patient. Here I have a patient uh, with. Uh, here I have a patient. Here the 59-year-old gentleman with performance status one, hoarseness three months. Here you have a. First of all, you should understand which is the level. It is supraglottis because it is at the level of the arachnoid. See an arachnoid. So it is at the level of the supraglottis. Here you can see a paraglottic fat. Here you cannot make the paraglottic fat. What does it mean to you? It means the paraglottic fat on right side is obliquated. We can see an enhancing lesion. If you draw a GTB, this will be the tumor. So then you have here you can make out the paraglottic fat. Here you cannot make paraglottic fat. So it is a T3 disease. Then the second thing, uh, so it is a T3 disease. Next is, uh, you can, this is at the level of the true vocal cord. This is at the level of, the, why it is? Because it's a cricoarachnoid joint. And you can see a lesion extending into the anterior commission. And also posterior commission is also involved. The paraglottic fat is infiltrated. Lesion crossing the midline, minimal extension to the opposite side. So this is the, this is the GT. And so this is a, again a T3 disease. And the same patient, this, this is a uh, same patient. The patient is having a subglottic extension. Why? I told you in the beginning, you should not see any, any, any soft tissue in, at the level of the cricoid cartilage. You can see a cricoid cartilage. And this is soft tissue you, you are seeing. What does it mean? It is a extension into the subglottic. So it is a subglottic extension is present. Another important thing I want to mention is that I told you that the patient can have a, a, the can have extra laryngeal spread, one by thyrohyoid membrane and second by trichothyroid membrane. Here you can you make out compared to this side, there is a soft tissue extension outside the laryngeal framework. So this is a extension is there. That is, can you make out? Yes. So this is because of the involvement of the trichothyroid membrane. Once the trichothyroid membrane is involved, the patient can have an extra lar laryngeal spread. That is a T4 disease. This is at the level of, which level? This is at the level of the supraglottis. You can see a very enhancing lesion involving the free epiglottic space, are epiglottic fold on both sides, involvement of the pyriform prosa and the paraglottic fat on one side. So it is a T3 disease. Now this same, it is a paraglottic fat, are epiglottic, supraglottic tumor, the are epiglottic fold extending into the, the paraglottic fat. This is a 
tumor with airway compromise. In such tumor, suppose the patient is having a mild stride, patient possesses the mild stride, then and patient is having no biopsy, and if it is a supraglottic tumor, and you check for any nodes, you admit the patient, you immediately do an FNAC. Ensure take a CT scan. Ensure that cartilage is involved or not. If the cartilage is not involved, you take an FNAC, walk up the patient for chemo, and you start the patient with induction chemotherapy. And never start this patient with concurrent chemo radiation program right away. And even if the biopsy is there, then it can aggravate the airway, aggravate uh, the laryngeal edema, and the patient may have to undergo a tracheostomy in the during the treatment. So you have to avoid that. This is an airway compromise. It's a tumor in the left supraglottic region. This is arytenoid cartilage. So paraglottic fat is infiltrated. So it's a T3 This is a keen. Uh, uh, so this is a, you can similar at the level of the supraglottis and hamstring lesion involving the array epiglottis. This is the pre-epiglottic space. The right paraglottic fat, the array epiglottic hole. Then this is a T3 disease involving the, and the false cord is involved. And uh, then you have a tumor. This is again a T3 disease. I'll skip this is again T3. Now coming to the pre-epiglottic space, how you will uh, how you will see in a pre-epiglottic space. This is mainly the best way to analyze the pre-epiglottic space is the uh, uh, is is to know the in the the sagittal wave. This is the base of tongue. This is the parabola. This is the epiglottis, and this is the this is the thyroid. So I told you in the superiorly, the pre-epiglottic space is bounded by the hyoepiglottic ligament. This is the hyoepiglottic ligament. And here you have the thyroepiglottic ligament. This is the epiglottis, this is thyroid cartilage. And the epiglottis is fixed to the thyroid cartilage. It is by the thyroepiglottic ligament, which forms the inferior boundary of the pre-epiglottic space. Anteriorly, it is the thyrohyoid membrane. And you make out that this is a thyrohyoid membrane. And anterior to that is a thyroid cartilage. So this is a thyroid cartilage, thyrohyoid membrane. We wow. cannot make out that membrane in CT scan. Posteriorly, it is the epiglottis. This is the epiglottis. This is how you see the CT scan. This is how a normal pre epiglottic space look in a sagittal view of the CT scan. And in this is how it will look like an axial view. This is a pre epiglottic space. So when you have a tumor, so this is a normal pre-epiglottic space. This you can see an enhancing lesion there. Can you make out? This is the this is so this is a pre-epiglottic space is normal. Then that patient is having a T3 disease. Same, this is a normal pre-epiglottic space and a pre-epiglottic space. You can see a lesion in the array epiglottic fold, the paraglottic fat, the pre-epiglottic space, and the epiglottis is involved. So this is the this is a pre pre epiglottic space. The standard treatment is to go for concurrent tumor radiation. You have an epiglottis tumor. If you have an epiglottic tumor, this can extend superiorly into the uh, valvula. You can you can have the you can extend into the pre epiglottic space. You can coming down to the epiglottis, uh, and that is how it can spread. So you have, this is an epiglottic tumor. You can see the, this is extending into the valvula. This is at the level of valvula. And this is the pre-epiglottic space, paraglottic fat. So it is a T3 epiglottic. Now, there are situations where the cartilage, now coming to the juicy bit, this is the cartilage involvement. If you have an inner cortex involvement, you have an inner cortex, it is T3. This is abutment, this is abutment, this is erosion, this is the lysis, then this is the transmural extralaryngeal spread. If you have an extralaryngeal spread through one through cartilage, then that patient should undergo a total laryngectomy or a near total laryngectomy, a bilateral LK neck dissection, followed by a post operative radiotherapy. Never consider chemo radiation for such patient. Intention of treatment is cure, but the treatment should be surgery followed by post operative radiation. If you have invasion of the inner cortex, this is the inner cortex, this is the outer cortex. This is the inner cortex, then the standard treatment is to go for, up to here, abutment and inner cortex. The standard treatment is to go for hemoradiation because it is only hemoradiation. If you have lysis or penetration, it is penetration, then we do not know. 
it needs a proper discussion with the radiologist. Okay, this is a situation where I always discuss with my radiologist. This I can make out. This is very obvious. Transoral, this is transmural extra laryngeal spread through and through cartilage. I straight away hand over the patient to my surgery colleague. If there is a delay, then I make constrained action. Otherwise, this is a straightforward problem. This is also a straightforward problem. But this is something which is, which is, uh, uh, it is a gray zone. We do not know whether this patient should undergo chemo radiation or whether the patient should undergo surgery. I will show you a few pictures. This is inner cortex. Can you make out? This is inner cortex, and also the patient is in a glottic extension. The T3 disease is in inner cortex with a subglottic extension. That's a T3 disease. I will take you a clinical example. This is a 65 year old gentleman, this performance status one, presents with hoarseness of four, four months duration. CT scan showed an enhancing lesion at the level of the, uh, the glottis. This is the cricoarenoid joint. You can see a lesion there. The entire the left focal cord is replaced by the tumor and the recommendation is in this constant line. You have a Supraglottic extension, the paraglottic path is infiltrated. Can you make out? This is a paraglottic path is obliterated. Okay, and the recommendation is involved. Subglottic extension is present. So it's a transglottic tumor with uh, a paraglottic path infiltration and anti recommendation involvement. There is no extra laryngeal spread, and the standard treatment is to go for chemo radiation. So T3 disease. And similar picture here, you can see this is at the level of the arachnoid, so it is a supraglottic level. This is at the level of the true vocal cord, tricoarenoid joint. Then you have this is a subglottic because because a tricoid cartilage you are seeing a soft tissue. It means a subglottic extension, and the, you can make out a sextral angle spread also. So it is a T3 to start with. So it became a T4A because of the minimal extra angle spread, but the cartilage is intact and you can make out a uh, subglottic extension here. This side, can you see this? Can you make out, anyone volunteer that? Can you see that? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, left side, you are not seeing any soft tissue here, but this is the tricot cartilage. You can make out a soft tissue here. It means a subglottic extension is present. That is one of the important, uh, uh, so that's how you look in a coronal view. So it is a T3 disease and sorry t4 eh? because eh? and the standard treatment if the cartilage is intact you can consider that patient for chemo radiation now a few tricky situations like uh, airway compromise i told you that airway compromise in such situations we have to it's like an emergency the decision making is very crucial whether we need to subject that patient for an emergency trachostomy or not the mild strider you gives you give steroids admit the patient closely observe and you work up the chemo if there is uh, a biopsy. If no biopsy, you search for any node. If no node, then you, may, you are in trouble. You have to do a tracheostomy and take a biopsy and follow. Then these patients never, such patients should be offered some form of induction chemotherapy. This may be the only, this may be, and number two, very heavy nodes. These are the two indications for giving induction chemotherapy in larynx. Otherwise, all business is with concurrent chemo radiation. Now, same picture. This is at the level of the true vocal cord, and you will see a airway compromise is there, and the left paraglottic, sorry, left paraglottic fat is obliterated by the tumor. You can see an enhancing lesion there. This is at the level of the supraglottis. So, at the level of the same patient, supraglottis and glottis. So, it is a T3 disease. Now, coming to the penetration, this is I told you there is lysis, but there is no extra laryngeal spread. To be very honest with you, I do not know how to treat the patient. Very honest with you. So uh, we have to take, we have to properly discuss with the radiologist and discuss if any extra laryngeal spread. Then you have to consider that patient for surgery. There's no doubt. But if the patient is not having any through and through cartilage destruction, then one option is to consider that patient for a chemo radiation if there is no aspiration. The T4 disease can be with cartilage destruction and without cartilage destruction. Sometimes the patient, I will show you, I have shown a few examples earlier. It's a very bulky disease. The cartilage is intact, but you can see the thyrohyoid membrane is yes, And a very bulky disease, the right paraglottic path is obliterated. And uh, it's a very bulky disease. So this patient may, there is 
proper evaluation of function is required for this patient. Any signs of aspiration? If so, then better to treat the patient with surgery. If no aspiration, then I treat with chemo radiation. So then chemo may I may give uh, induction chemo for this patient because this patient uh, may have an airway compromise, very bulky disease. Chemo followed by chemo radiation. This is a, a cartilage intact, but the patient is having an extra larynx spread. This is the thyrohyoid membrane is pierced and patient is having an extra larynx spread. So this is a paraglottic fat infiltration is there, ventricles. So you can see that the pre-epiglottic the pre-epiglottic space that uh, you can see a posterior extension of the tumor and the extra larynx spread. Again, this the patient should have this have a proper evaluation in the bone window and discussion with the radiologist. Is there in through and through cartilage? Then never take the patient for chemo radiation. That patient should undergo surgery followed by adjunct radiation. Now coming to the frank cartilage destruction patients. And this patient should be offered surgery followed by post-op radiation. This was a 64-year-old gentleman with good performance status. Why good performance status? Because it's a planned treatment. The patient should undergo surgery and post-op radiation. So any patient with a T4A with cartilage destruction, you should have enough reserve. The patient should have enough reserve to undergo the planned treatment. Sometimes the patient may undergo surgery, and if the patient does not have enough reserve to undergo the plant post operative radiotherapy, then the whole surgical treatment is in vain. So, we should the decision should be taken up front that the patient should have enough reserve. What is the performance of the patient? So, here in such patients, we have to understand that this patient is having extra laryngeal spread, cartilage destruction close to the skin, and we may have a reconstruction and more chance for morbidity. We have to have, discuss with the patient regarding the pharyngocutaneous fistula. Then the patient may require a flap. And also the patient is having a high chance for relapse. It's a T4 disease. And whenever you have any cartilage destruction, what are the things you have to look in CT scan? Of course, cartilage. Second is, where, what about the artery? Whether the encasement of the artery is present. If no, whether the encasement is present, then it becomes T4. What about the what about the prevertebral patient? Third is thyroid gland. These are three important things you should look in a CT scan of a T4 disease. So whether the patient is having a what about the artery? What about the prevertebral fascia? What about the thyroid? Because then you are then you need to modulate. Here you have an extensive skin involvement, thyroid cartilage in destruction is present. And patient is also having a thyroid gland involvement. So you have to consider that thyroid, thyroidectomy yeah, for this patient, hemithyroidectomy for this patient when you do the surgery. Now coming to the advanced disease, very advanced disease. Very advanced disease, very extensive disease involving from skin to, you can say very, very bulky disease, prevertebral fascia involvement. Straight away the patient will go for palliation. Which palliative treatment? That's also very important. That is palliative radiation or palliative chemotherapy. If this patient and patient is having an airway compromise. If there's no tracheostomy, and never consider that patient for palliative radiotherapy. Because again, this patient, if you plant 30, 30 green, 10 fractions, patient will develop laryngeal edema in between. The patient may have to stop treatment in between. The patient has to do a tracheostomy. So the life will be very miserable. You give palliative chemotherapy. If the patient is having the adequate reserve, performance status. You consider that patient for palliative chemotherapy. Similar picture. This is again a very advanced disease. Here you can see a lesion extending into the prevertebral fascia, encasement of the carotid artery, so it's a T4B. And here the surgeon might have find it very difficult to do a very difficult tracheostomy. Extensive disease from epiglottis to the caudal edge of the cricoid cartilage. The entire larynx is replaced by the tumor, prevertebral fascia involvement. The intention of treatment is palliation. So, which patient with T4B should be taken for radical approach? They should be very good selected patients. Patient with good performance status, young patient, low volume disease, absence of heavy nodes, patients who have good social support, and highly motivated patient who understand the naturalistic disease can say that there is chance for failure. The T4B can be with cartilage destruction and without cartilage destruction. And if the patient with cartilage destruction, then the intention of treatment should be, if the intention of treatment is radical, the patient should undergo surgery. For that, you have to consider 
induction chemo followed by surgery. If the patient is a candidate for non-surgical approach, like cartilage intact, preventable phagia involvement is there, the chemo radiation may be an option. So if the patient is having, here you have a lesion, actually this very extensive disease involving the left uh, uh, supraglottis, involving the pyriform fossa, pre-vertebral fish involvement, but the patient has a low limb disease. So this patient was treated with concurrent chemo radiation. If there's a cartilage involvement is there, then you give induction chemotherapy. And after two or three cycles of chemotherapy, you repeat. If there's pre-vertebral fascia becomes free, then you consider that patient for surgery followed by post-op radiation. Now we are coming to the last part of our discussion, that is an N3P node. If a matter nodes or any nodes infiltrate the stenocleidomastoid, is it is an N3P disease. So I told you uh, last two classes. In the first class, I discussed about the level of lymph nodes. So this is a level, this is a, you can see, this is a, it's a lesion in the left area. This is a right side, the right area epiglottic fold, the pyriform fossa, left area epiglottic fold, and the pyriform fossa is replaced by a tumor, enhancing lesion here with multiple nodes. It is an N3B disease. The standard treatment is to go for chemo radiation. Now in patients who have large disease, large bulky nodes, you have to select the patient. You cannot put all the N3 in the same basket and say it is palliation, no. Small primary, but a, if the, the skin is uh, patient is having patient is having a 6.5 in the 6.5 node, it is also N3 disease. Young patient, you have to consider that patient for radical approach. So patient is having a very extensive skin involvement or patient is having an encasement of the carotid artery. Generally, they go for a palliative treatment. Now, uh, I have for this is a pre-vertebral fascia, post-cricoid involvement, and so this is T3 disease from a supraglottic tumor. This is a T3 because uh, and uh, uh, for not sure. This is a, again an advanced disease. Here, the pre-vertebral fascia is there. Then no. It is a T4 bed disease, supraglottic This is a T4 or T4B. Actually, it is a T4P because the patient is having, all the prevertebral phase is intact. The patient is having encasement of the carotid. So it's a T4B. Now coming to the checklist, which I have told you in the beginning. One side of the disease, you should know where the effects of the tumor, where the, the main tumor, epicenter of the tumor, whether it is a supraglottic, glottic, subglottic tumors are very rare. And there is a fragile tumor coming into the supraglottic larynx or vice versa. What about the oleum size? This all can be made out only in the CT scan. Pre-epiglottic space involvement is T3. Paraglottic fat is T3. Post-cricoid involvement is T3. Extension to other subsites is T2. Anterior commissioner involvement will not change the disease. Cartilage involvement is T4A. Thyroid gland is T4A. Pre-vertebral phase is T4A. In the spread, the cartilage becomes T4A and lump. So, coming to the treatment, uh, I, I, because I have not discussed any, any of the clinical trials. Yes, sir, one I have not discussed. Yes, uh, can may I finish? Then we will take up. Yes, okay. uh, so yes, okay. In stage one, uh, you have to limit the one. Treatment. Stage two is stage in stage one and stage two. Our intention is to have a cure number one to have a good quality of voice. So it can be either radiotherapy or surgery, but you should even should be limited to single manner. For T3 disease, as a stage three, or patient who have a T4 without in one to N2, N0 to N2. The standard treatment is to consider chemo radiation, provided there is no aspiration. If a patient is having T4A with cartilage destruction or a T4 or T3 disease with aspiration, the standard treatment is to consider surgery followed by post operation. For all T4B and for all TN3 disease, the treatment should be individual, a radical approach or palliative. If a patient is having cartilage intact, young patient, highly motivated, low volume disease and aspiration treatment is chemo.
the patient is having cardiac destruction, so irritable facial involvement, young patient, low volume disease, then you have to consider that patient for induction chemo, reassessment, then you do surgery follow up. Bulky nodes, patients who have very bulky tumors, patients have a poor performance status, or elderly patients. The intention of treatment is application. So that is a so uh, catch me on uh, this next week. Uh, the webinar, fourth and August, 10 p.m. Uh, uh, many of you have many got the invitation. So that is with the Chipma CC on on the fourth and fifth. I will give a lecture on C and nasopharynx. On fourth, I will discuss about the uh, radiological anatomy, which we have discussed in the larynx as the nasopharynx. On fourth evening at 7 p.m. Fifth, I will discuss about the evidence for the treatment and also the carbs for the relation of custom On twentieth uh, August, uh, for chart rounds, uh, I'll be discussing about the role of thyroid treatment in head and neck cancer. Not the the about the drug, I mean, not the supportive care. I will discuss which patient should be therapy, which patient should be off thyroid radiation. So that and. Uh, uh, this will be the discussion. So that's also based on some cases. So try to catch me on this two meetings. Thank you very much. Yeah, thyroid cartilage and invasion and without invasion, how to differentiate that in PTC because both look hypodense. Sir, can you show in picture, sir? In the in, in the bone window, bone window, then you have to have a window. This is the you have to discuss with the radiologist that can be properly in the bone window. So in the bone window, you can if you are seeing that try to see. Here, this is a higher. So, in all the, can you hear me? Sir, voice break is there, sir. Uh, uh, because there's a message uh, coming, the internet is unstable. Okay, thyroid cartilage. So, you have, a, you can see that. But this cartilage, you have to see that in all. Then you have to have a proper discussion with the radiologist. Then, then only you have to ensure that this is a diagnosis of exclusion. Means, by principle, you have to look into each cut and discuss with the radiologist whether the thyroid cartilage is seen in bone window intact in all cuts. If so, that's fine. If not, then you have to take it as cartilage involved, and it is. And here also, here you can see this is this is the thyroid cartilage is intact. This patient is having extra laryngeal. But you have to see that in all cuts. Then only you have to diagnose it as a cartilage is intact. Here it is a diagnosis of exclusion. By principle, you have to look into all slices. Then you say that thyroid is, invo is not involved. Then you can consider that patient for Okay, sir. Sir, uh, the pathway is via thyroid cartilage only, sir. Then how come it will be intact for extra laryngeal screen? In this slide, this, um, it looks like it goes through thyroid only, sir. Uh, that we cannot say because you have to take in the bone window. This is, a, it can be a thyrohyoid. This is a thyroid. This is a hyoid. Thyrohyoid membrane. With this cut alone, I, we cannot say. The thyrohyoid membrane is pierced. So it can enter into extra space. Oh, okay. 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 I have some questions. So I will try to, I will try to. Yes, sir. Uh, anterior commission involved, we, do we have to use bolus or in any other option? Okay. So, in a patient with anterior commission involvement, why you need to know? Because when you use the energy, always you have to use a, either you have to use a cobalt machine or you have to use a 4 m Whenever you use a 6 m photon or a higher energy, then you will not get adequate coverage if the patient is having anterior commission involvement. So, to build your ISO there, to the skin and to the to more superficial, 
then that patient would plan a lot of quality improvement. Okay, why cartilage destruction or extra lateral spread to be sent for survey? Okay, this is based on a VA trial. If you look into the VA trial, compared to patients who have T4A, cartilage destruction or more, when those patients were given chemo, induction chemo followed by radiotherapy for those who responded 50% regression, in spite of there was a response with induction chemotherapy, when they were given induction chemotherapy for patients who have T4 disease upfront, the salvage rate was 56%. Means whenever you give a chemo radiation for patient with a larynx with cartilage destruction, there is a high chance that this patient requires a salvage laryngectomy. Number two, the patient is more likely to have a dysfunction of the larynx. So then, if the patient is given cartilage destruction, you are giving chemo radiation, the patient will continue to aspirate. And if the patient requires a laryngectomy, most of the time, the patient may require a laryngectomy because of the thyroid dysfunction, laryngeal dysfunction, sorry, laryngeal dysfunction. In that situation, then the patient may not become a candidate because the patient will have a poor pulmonary release. So, if the patient is a T4 with cartilage destruction, then that patient should undergo a fetal infection. Can it the infection management? If the invasion. Sir, when to give induction chemotherapy followed by radical CCRT or when to give upfront thylage okay. If a patient is having any patient, well, first you have to decide the mode of the Okay, never dis decide your, whether your treatment after giving induction. Decision should be taken up. If a patient is having a very bad cartilage impact, no aspiration, then if the airway compromises, then you have to give induction. But it does not mean that that's the standard treatment. The standard treatment is to give concurrent chemo. So you give induction in situations where there is an airway compromise. Number two, if you have a very bulky move, and especially if you are planning for an ICR, and you presume that this patient may require an optimal ICR, then you get uh, induction program. Then you start the patient for chemo. Okay, if you are planning for palliation, say if a patient is having a T4B disease, patients may have N3B disease, elderly patient. Suppose if a patient is having a T3 and 0, patient is having a performance of the C, then you may, you may not be able to subject that patient even for a radical radiograph. Then you have to consider palliation. So the poor performance status patient, patient with advanced disease, and either by primary or by no, then patients require palliative. The most important thing when you give palliative radiotherapy is that ensure that the airway is intact. Otherwise, the patient may have to undergo tracheostomy infection. And can you show okay, can you show trichloroethylene in CT scan? Okay, yes, that I will show. So this is the cryopharyctomy. So this is the cryopharyctomy. This is the this is a cryopharyctomy. This is the arachnoid. This is the cryopharyctomy. Once you see this, then you are at the level of the clock. Okay. Uh, any 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 other question? Role of cetuximab in T3 or T4 adhesive. Okay, um, if a standard treatment is to give concurrent chemo radiation, if a patient cannot tolerate either due to if a patient is elderly, poor performance status, or due to renal impairment. You may consider on a whole antibody, preferably the test uh, What are the indications for radiotherapy after leaks of cordectomy and what is misadicate mark? Okay. The first and foremost thing is that if you have negative mark, then you try to, you never try to give radiation for that. You closely follow me. So if a patient is for laser treatment, then if my surgeon says that cell, like there is a gross residue of cell, that may be the only situation I will consider radical. Otherwise, the margin is negative. As long as it is negative, 
I am not bothered about mark. I will ask my servant, I am going to have a close follow and never give any issue on that one because that will only uh, the uh, that will only lead on to deterioration of the function. Yes. Um, Okay, thank you very much for your patient uh, uh, listening. I sincerely appreciate uh, for joining uh, this. Role of neogen, uh, neo and gen RT. Okay, no role of neo and gen radiotherapy. There is no concept called role of neo and gen radiotherapy in head and neck. It is neo gen chemo or definitive radiation or definitive chemo radiation. Role of MRI in CLR. Okay, then uh, role of uh, MRI. Okay, MRI can be sometimes problem solving. And it can be a problem make also. It's a doublet sword. Sometimes if you take a, a CT scan, uh, this, it is sensitivity is less, but specificity is good. If you do an MRI, then especially if there are some institutions do, especially in Europe, they practice MRI. Because whenever you use an MRI, the first and foremost criteria is that you should have a dedicated radiologist who is experienced in head and neck radiology. If not, then it will it can be a double edged sword. It becomes the sensitivity is very high. The patient will be reported as patient is having extra labyrinth by thyroid cartilage destruction plus. The pathologist will say cartilage is free. Then you may have to subject that patient for a total laryngectomy. Otherwise this patient would have been a candidate for chemo radiation and organ transplant. Yes, uh, MRI okay. Uh, I will uh, my my I will write my mail ID and uh, I think uh, uh, many of you have my mail ID. If not, then I will write here. Then okay, you can uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can catch me if you want. You can I can share my presentation. It's free for you because I prepared this for uh, residents only. Uh, this is my email ID and uh, so you can. Uh, can send me uh, a mail so I can share my presentation. And this is my WhatsApp also. I will, uh, if you have anything, you can, my WhatsApp is 9463 So thank you very much for your patient listening. I, uh, 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 this one, God bless you and all the best for your exams. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful class, sir. Thank you so much.